So I was looking to upgrade my OnePlus 60 and I was done with the massive phones OnePlus have been releasing off red with OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro. So I finally, I finally convinced myself that I will get the Samsung Galaxy S20. But I didn't. And this is probably why you shouldn't as well if you live in India, Asia or other parts of Europe. So I was all excited to buy the Galaxy S20 and I was watching these reviews from MKBSG, your average consumer and other YouTubers from US and suddenly I realized that these reviews are not relevant for me because Samsung Galaxy S20 comes with Exynos 990 chipset in India unlike in the US or Canada where it comes with Snapdragon 865. Now I know a lot of you out there are not even aware about this and even if you do, you don't really care, right? Wrong. You should know this. You should know this that Samsung selling the Galaxy S20 with Exynos 990 chipset this year does make a huge difference. How? Well, let's try to find out. So for the starters, you should know that the Samsung Galaxy S20 comes with Snapdragon 865 in Canada, US and South Korea and some parts of China as well. While for the rest of the world, it gets the Exynos 990 chipset, which is Samsung's own chipset. Now, Samsung have been doing this in the past and most of the years were when the Exynos variant was somewhat similar and or even better than the Snapdragon counterpart. But this year, that Snapdragon 865 is not only better when it comes to theoretical benchmarks, but it's also better when it comes to gaming and it also does not heat up a lot. But what really changed my mind and pissed me off was the battery life. Yes, the Snapdragon 865 variant is also 15 to 20% better when it comes to battery life. And there are also some reports that claims that the Exynos 990 variant comes with Samsung's own ISO cell camera sensor, while the Snapdragon 865 comes with the Sony's Exmor sensor. Well, I think, but that's a whole another video in my opinion. So let's not talk about that in this one. Now, I'm not going to give you a lot of numbers and try to convince you on that because honestly, I don't have any of the phones with me right now. But what I can do is I can make you guys aware about this issue and I can tell you that what you will guys be paying for when you pay Samsung your hard-earned money for the Galaxy S20 series this year. So I will leave the links to everything I refer to in this video in the description box below. Well, a lot of you are already wondering, right? Well, Nirupam, these benchmarks and tests don't really reflect the day-to-day -day usage. Well, you're right. In fact, you'll not even notice any different unless you use these phones side by side. But if it's true, the Snapdragon 865 variant is superior to the Exynos 990 variant, well, the chances are that your Galaxy S20 will not age well. What I mean by that is that if you are planning to get the Samsung Galaxy S20 or S20 Plus or even S20 Ultra in India, the chances of your phones getting some issues like battery drain or other hiccups are a lot more than, for example, someone buying the Galaxy S20 in the United States. And when Samsung rolls out those software updates later in this device's tenure, the OS will get only more demanding. Now, I don't have any personal problem with the Exynos chipsets. I still think the Exynos 990 is a great chipset for a flagship phone in India in 2020. But what I do have a problem is that Samsung claims that both these phones have the same level of performance and they charge almost the same price across the world. And if you think it's not a big deal, well, people have been furious about this issue, so much so that they have signed a petition which actually has more than 45,000 signatures. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below, where people are claiming that either Samsung should stop selling the Galaxy S or Note lineup with the Exynos chipset, or they should definitely lower the price of the Exynos variant. So why does Samsung do this? Well, if you ask Samsung right now, they would just say that US, Canada and South Korea uses CDMA bands. So Snapdragon 865 is a better fit there, while the rest of the world is using GSM bands. So the Exynos 990 is a better fit there. But I think that's only half of the reason. Because Samsung has always been selling the Galaxy S or Note lineup with Exynos variant in its home country, that is South Korea. But this year, this time around, out of nowhere, Samsung decided to sell the Galaxy S20 series with the Snapdragon 865 in South Korea as well. 
and this took companies owned chipset division by a surprise as well and they even went ahead and said in public that they feel humiliated because the company ditched their own chipset for the Snapdragon 865 in South Korea. Well other reasons might be that Samsung may be earning a better margin on the variants that come with Exynos 990 chipset because it's their own chipset but I think that's not entirely true because Samsung actually has a separate chipset division and they actually buy it from them like they do from Qualcomm. Well, one more reason I think Samsung actually does this is because to have a competitive advantage. And they actually went ahead and said in one of their shareholder meetings, because Qualcomm right now is the leader when it comes to Android chipset across the world. And Samsung don't want that because Samsung is manufacturing a really good chipset. So they want to have some level of market share in this department or in this industry. So accusing Samsung of using an inferior chipset in their flagship lineup in some part of the world to earn more revenue will not be entirely right in my opinion. So is Exynos chipset dead for Samsung Galaxy S lineup or Note lineup? Well, I don't think so. Definitely not. And in fact, I expect Samsung to work even harder and build the next iteration of Exynos chipset and fight against the next iteration of the Qualcomm chipset. So I think that would be interesting as well if we can see something like that in the Note lineup, for example, which is all set to come sometime in the later part of this year. So should you go ahead and buy the Samsung Galaxy S20 series phones in India or any other part of the world except US, Canada or South Korea? Well, in my opinion, if you are a casual gamer or if you're just a casual user and don't really care about the battery life a lot well i think you will love the samsung galaxy s20 but on the other hand if you are more of a tech nerd like me and if you're a power user and do care about your phone heating up or battery life issues well i would recommend skip the samsung galaxy s20 lineup for now or get one imported from us or other part of the region where the snapdragon variant is available so yes guys this was my quick video i just wanted to make this video sharing my experiences and sharing my emotions around this issue i know i am expecting a lot of hate in the comment section below about that you don't even have the device how can you just comment on that well go ahead you can do that but i think my job is to make you guys aware about every issue that's emerging in the tech industry and that's exactly what i'm doing so if you like this video share this with your friends who are planning to buy the galaxy s20 and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to subscribe to tknet and especially hit that bell icon so that you get notified whenever i upload my next video and also follow me on instagram and twitter as well to stay updated of the latest tech news in india and across the globe so yes guys this was it keep asking and i'll see you in the next one